Hey, thanks for stopping by to check out this video on the View Composition API. Uh, for those who don't know, View Composition API, the closest analogy to it really is uh, React Hooks. What I, the benefit I see from it is the ability to kind of isolate functionality into separate components so that you don't kind of have this chaos inside of your single file component. It's really a, a good way to do separation of concerns. So to get things started here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to take the default app you get from Vue CLI and I am going to clear out all the hello world garbage that you get by default and I'm very quickly going to create a simple, for lack of a better word, list app that allows you to add items to a list and remove items to a list. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because that's not the purpose of it, but it's the baseline of everything that we're going to do. And so after we get this app working, I'm going to show you the process of converting it um, using the Vue Component API. Um, another thing to note right now is that I'm using Vue 2.0, and so the implementation that I'm the implementation that I'm going to do here is going to be based on the um, plugin that they give you access to for 2.0 to kind of show you how it works. So what you see here, I'm uh, wrapping up this application. Like I said, it's a simple uh, list item. We're storing our list in this things array. We have the ability to add items or add things, and we have the ability to delete things. Um, like I said, a pretty basic app, but we're about to clean it up and start to use the composition API so you guys can get a good feel for how to use it. Um, for those who like to read, here's the RFC on the composition API. There's a fair bit of documentation that exists here. Um, if you want to understand like they say, the motivation for it, some drawbacks, and some challenges that they have. Um, I, you know, take a take a read. As I stated, we're gonna um, use the plugin that was created for 2.0 on so the View Composition API um, to make our project work. So the first thing we're gonna do here is um, add the plugin to the application. So you need to use Yarn or NPM, I'm using Yarn here, to actually add the View Composition uh, API to your project. Um, after you add it to your project, you need to import it in main.js and then add the plugin in main.js. This will give us access to it in our various components in our application. Uh, and after you get all that wrapped up, we're going to go into Hello World and we're going to start to just comment out the pieces of functionality that we're going to move into our separate component. And you start that process by creating this setup function, which is the entry point. And from inside of there, we're going to identify the fields or properties that are going to be reactive that we want to return from our setup function. So first, let's start off with our basic list of things which we're going to hold. And uh, they have this term called reactive that's, that you need. And what this reactive thing is going to do, it's going to allow this data to act honestly as if you had it, had specified it as you have below inside the data section of your component. I want to put some default data in there so that we can start to see what the app looks like uh, before we have the, give the user the ability to enter the data. Um, also, let's add some additional imports that we're going to need from View Composition API to make all this stuff work. Clearly, we need the reactive, and then we need this thing called two refs, which I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time trying to explain exactly what that is doing. Um, I'll leave a good comment here to, you know, based on what the documentation says, but let's just take a second to talk a little bit more about what two refs is doing in comparison to reactive. So um, a little bit of uh, documentation that I found in the Composition API talking about the two refs and reactives. The approach that I've taken is that I just treat uh, my quote state as reactive inside of my uh, composition functions. And then what I do is I uh, destructure the data and return it as two refs when I want to use it inside my components. It seems like the easiest way for me just to wrap my head around these concepts, but I guess as I play with it more, I'll figure out a much better approach, and maybe I'll do another post to kind of explain it again. So let's get back to the coding. So like I said, um, we've got our state coming back out, and one of the objects from our state is this thing called list. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to iterate through the list in our template and show all the items that are there. So let's run it now and see what we get. 
Um, hopefully, as you can see, I have a default object in there called Aaron, so we should get a list that just shows Aaron in the list. Oh, I have an error. Let's see, what is it that I have done wrong? Oh, yeah, I've destructured on the wrong side, so I want to do the destruction to the two refs, not on the object inside of it. Let's see if that makes a difference. We refresh, and yes, so I get my first object, Aaron, which is what's in the things array. So everything's working fine, so now let's go one by one and start to move the functions out. So let's take the add thing function and put it inside of um, my setup, and uh, let's create a function, clean it up a little bit. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to take the value that's passed in, and we are going to um, create a new new array with that value. Uh, what is going wrong? What is going wrong? Oh yeah, let me, I gotta pass that function back also. So now let's see, we have our add function in place. Um, the button is set properly to add a new object. Okay, and now we're able to add objects. Let's clean the screen up a little bit so we get a better look and feel of the UI. Um, put some padding around the side of this and let's run this again and see how it goes. Alright, so now we've got the UI cleaned up a bit. We have our add-in. Let's move down there, so now let's add the delete. Basically all delete's going to do is we're going to run a filter on my things array. Uh, remove any item that, um, actually excuse me, filter out everything that doesn't match the current item. So we'll get a new array. Did I say that backwards? You know what I mean. Basically, I'm going to loop through the list, and uh, if it doesn't match the item that I want to remove, I'm going to add it to the new array. Uh, so then I will end up with an array that has an item removed. So now let's uh, add some items, and then I can add a couple more here. And then now if I delete the item, you can see we're getting our reactivity, the item is being deleted. But also, as you notice, I've moved all that functionality out of my actual component. It's kind of set up here. I don't want to use set up again, but it's here. It's separated from the rest inside the setup function. But let's do something that gives us really what we're looking for, which is the separation of concerns completely. Let's create a file called use things. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate all this functionality from manipulating the thing into this new file, and which we'll then be able to just import into our component. Um, so actually, if we now need to use this functionality somewhere else, as you can see, this is just a made-up example, but it just shows you how you can take that functionality, put it somewhere, reuse it, get the reactivity, get a nice cleaned up single file component, and go from there. Now let's, uh, as I said, get all this stuff moved over into a separate file. Let's format it, clean it up a bit. Let's bring over our imports that we need to make all this stuff work. So, lovely thing here is that this is just another function that uh, we're going to export. We're going to set it as a default export here. Um, I'm not passing any parameters in, but theoretically they could be used to set default, like specifically maybe the default value of the things array. So now I have this new use things. A component that I've created, I'm going to import use things, um, uh, import the use things file now. So now what I do is I take all that functionality that used to be inside of setups, I've exported it out into this other module, um, and now I'm going to import it and I'm going to use it inside of my setup. So it's nice and clean, I don't have all that, all that kind of I have a nice separation of concerns. There's kind of no distraction. I know what use things is. It's all the functionality that supports manipulating my things. Um, I've returned those properties from use things. So you can see the two refs, the add thing and the delete thing is being returned. They're now in my things prop. Um, and then what I do is, as I did before, I now destructure that. So then once again, I have access to the things object, I have access to the delete thing function, I have access to the add thing function, I have the reactivity that I need, and look how, how clean and concise my uh, single file component is. As I said, this is a contrived example, but imagine a more complex component that has a bunch of different functionality going on that might need to be reused in other areas of the app. Um, I think this composition API adds a lot of value when used properly um, and can really clean your code up a bit.
uh, probably also can help you quite a bit with your testing and and um, and the ability to kind of isolate code like I said stick with that separation of concerns um, we could take a look here using the the view dev tools and you can see how when I dig into the component after it's all compiled I get all the reactivity my functions and my array uh, are sitting here inside of my my data properties on my single file component so it, it's all a, a pretty neat little package wrapped up you know I strongly recommend uh, you take some more time and dig into this and really you know get a, a good understanding let's just add just to show you that we can pass multiple properties back we're going to um, you know once again fake uh, that we're actually making a synchronous call here by creating this loading property uh, that we will set for when we're adding objects and removing objects from the array. Um, this is once again is to show you the reactivity that you can get and how how you know we've really pushed everything about manipulating things into this things hook, um, for lack of a better word. So what I'll do is just to fake it. Um, when you add a thing, I'll set my data loading to true. Um, we will wrap this with a set timeout to kind of um, provide some sort of delay. And then on the back end, um, after we're done, we will set uh, data loading to false. So as I said, if you make an HTTP request or something like that, you'd set your data loading to true before your HTTP request. And then on completion or on error, you'd set it to false. Uh, <clears throat> so now... We have our new property loading, which we want to be reactive. Um, we will need to um, pass it. Uh, uh, actually, we don't need to pass it back. It's already inside of my data, which is being uh, which is being passed back to the function. So it should come back um, without me making any additional changes to the code. Uh, what did I do wrong? What's missing? All right. No, I need to actually have it do something with this property that I'm passing back. So what we're going to do is we're go just going to put a simple v if around, and if loading is true, we will display some text to indicate that we're loading, and we will hide the uh, add button. And if loading is false, we will show the add button. And so you should get get an example of what it's gonna, what it's going to look like probably want to use some sort of you know loading progress in indicator in real life but once again this is just to show you how you can use the view composition API um, get your separation of concerns but still get that same ease of use that everyone's used to with using Vue.js so let's see if we got everything straight let's kind of save these files give it a run and let's see what we get see so we get our loading get our loading and I think that's you know pretty much what I want to cover like I said, I'll try and dig a little deeper in this and um, create uh, some more information. Uh, looks like I forgot an error. Yeah, and create some more um, videos or blog posts around the Composition API. But I think it's pretty good stuff. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, stay tuned for more good stuff. Uh, the future is written in code. Take care. Bye.